Hi everyone and welcome to my channel Hobbit BB. This video of mine is about allergic rhinitis that is also known as hay fever. Well, this causes cold-like signs and symptoms such as runny nose, itchy eyes, congestion, sneezing and sinus pressure. But unlike a cold, hay fever is not caused by a virus. Hay fever is caused by an allergic response to outdoor or indoor allergens such as pollen, dust mites or tiny flecks of skin and saliva shed by cats, dogs and other animals with fur or feathers that is known as pet dander. Besides making you miserable, hay fever can affect your performance at work or school and generally interferes with your life. But you don't have to put up with annoying symptoms. You can learn to avoid triggers and find the right treatment. Earlier on this channel, I have already posted a short video about uh, hay fever. I hope you have already seen that video. And today I am going to discuss this illness in detail. Well, first of all, let me tell you the signs and symptoms. Well, these include runny nose and nasal congestion, watery, itchy red eyes that we call as allergic conjunctivitis. Sneezing can also occur. Also, you can suffer from mild cough, uh, itchy nose, uh, roof of mouth or throat, swollen blue colored skin under the eyes that is allergic shiners, post nasal drip, and also you may suffer from fatigue. Okay. Now I'll tell you some seasonal factors that are responsible for this. Well, your hay fever signs and symptoms may start or worsen at a particular time of year. Triggers include tree pollen, which is common in early spring, grass pollen, which is common in late spring and summer, ragweed pollen, which is common in fall. Dust mites, cockroaches and dander from pets can be bothersome year round. This is known as perennial. Okay. Symptoms caused by dander might worsen in winter when houses are closed up. Spores from indoor and outdoor fungi and molds are considered both seasonal and perennial. And now I'll tell you the difference between common cold and hay fever. Well, signs and symptoms can be similar, so it can be difficult to tell which one you have. But there are certain differences uh, between the two. Okay. Well, first of all, I'll tell you the difference in signs and symptoms. Well, in hay fever, and uh, there is a, r a runny nose with thin watery discharge and there is no fever okay so it's just a sort of a, uh, misnomer as a hay fever because there is no fever in this anyway while in co in common cold uh, the signs and symptoms are runny nose with watery or thick yellowish discharge and bo body aches can occur and also you may suffer from low grade fever okay and then there is a difference in onset of symptoms in hay fever, uh, the symptoms start usually uh, immediately after exposure to allergens, while in common cold, uh, the symptoms start usually one to three days after exposure to a cold virus. And then there is a difference in the duration. Uh, well, in allergic rhinitis or hay fever, as long as you are exposed to allergens, you may suffer from all these signs and symptoms. And in common cold, usually the duration is uh, between three to seven days. Okay and uh, you should see your doctor if you cannot find relief from your hay fever symptoms allergy medication don't provide relief or cause annoying side effects also you should see your doctor if you have another condition that can worsen hay fever symptoms such as nether polyps asthma or frequent sinus infection okay many people especially children get used to hay fever symptoms uh, symptoms so they might not seek treatment until the symptom becomes severe but getting the right treatment might offer relief now i'll tell you the causes when you have uh, hay fever, your immune system identifies the harmless airborne substance as harmful. Your immune system then produces antibodies to, to this harmless substance. The next time you come in contact with the substance, these antibodies signal your immune system to release chemicals such as histamine into your bloodstream, which causes a reaction that leads to signs and symptoms of hay fever. Now I'll tell you the risk factor. The risk factor, um, I mean, that increases your chances of developing allergic rhinitis are having other allergies are asthma, having a topic dermatitis that is eczema, having a blood relative such as parent or sibling with allergies are asthma, living or working in an environment that constantly exposes you to allergens such as animal dander or dust mites, having a mother who smoked during your first year of life. Now I'll tell you the complications. Problems that may be associated, associated with the hay fever include a reduced quality of life. Well, Hay fever can interfere with your enjoyment of activities and cause you to be less productive. For many people, hay fever symptoms lead to absence from work or school. Poor sleep. Hay fever symptoms can keep you awake or make it hard to stay asleep, which can lead to fatigue and a general feeling of being unwell that is known as malaise. 
worsening asthma. Hay fever can worsen signs and symptoms of asthma such as coughing and wheezing. Well, on this channel, I have already uploaded a video about asthma and that is very informative video. You can see that video, okay? Uh, also, sinusitis can occur. Well, prolonged sinus congestion due to hay fever may increase your susceptibility to a sinusitis that is an infection or inflammation of the membrane that lines the sinuses. Ear infection. In children, hay fever often is a factor in the middle ear infection that is known as otitis media. Now, I'll tell you some preventive measures. Well, there is no way to avoid getting hay fever. If you have hay fever, the best thing to do is to lessen your exposure to the allergens that cause your symptoms. Take allergy medication before you are exposed to allergens as directed by your doctor. Now, uh, let me tell you the diagnosis of uh, allergic rhinitis or hay fever. Well, when the patient comes to us, we perform a physical examination. I will take a proper medical history and possibly recommend uh, uh, the test, which I am going to tell you. Uh, we can recommend skin prick test. Well, you are uh, you are watch for an allergic reaction after small amounts of material that can trigger allergies that uh, pricked into the skin of your arm or upper back. If you are allergic, you develop a red pump that is hive at the site of that allergen. Allergy specialists usually are best kept to perform allergy skin test. Also, we can order for allergy blood test. Well, a blood sample is sent to a lab to measure your immune system response to a specific allergen. Also called the radioallergic absorbent the, uh, the test, that is RAST. This test measures the amount of allergy, allergy causing antibodies in your bloodstream, known as immunoglobulin E, that is IgE antibodies. Okay. Now coming to the treatment, it is best to limit your exposure to substances that cause you hay fever as much as possible. If your uh, hay fever is not too severe, or the counter medications may be enough to relieve symptoms. For worse symptoms, you may need prescription medication. Many people get the best deal from a combination of allergy medications. You might need to try a few before you find what works best. If your child has hay fever, talk with your doctor about treatment. Not all medications are approved for use in children. Read labels carefully. Now I'll tell you about the medication for allergic rhinitis. These include nasal corticosteroids. These prescription nasal sprays help prevent and treat the nasal inflammation, nasal itching and runny nose caused by hay fever. For many people, they are the most effective hay fever medication and they are often the first type of medication prescribed. Examples include momitasone that comes with the name of nasonex and budesonide that comes with the name of rhinocord, both available by prescription and flutic fluticasone and that is come with the name of flow nasal allergy relief. Budisonide that is uh, come with the name of rhinocordology and triamcinone loan that is nasocordology 24R available over the counter. The prescription nasal spray azelastine and fluticasone that comes with the name of Dismista combines an antihistamine with a steroid. Nasal corticosteroids are a safe long term treatment for most people. Side effects can include an unpleasant smell or taste and nose irritation. Steroid side effects are rare. I mean, I'm talking about nasal corticosteroids, okay? Then another second choice of medicine is antihistamine. These preparations are usually given as pills. However, there are also antihistamine nasal, nasal sprays and eye drops. Antihistamines can help with itching, sneezing, and a runny nose, but have less effect in congestion. They work by blocking a symptom uh, causing chemical released by your immune system during an allergic reaction. I mean, as I told you previously, the histamine is responsible, so they block the effect of histamine, okay? Because histamine causes all the uh, allergic, reaction, uh, allergic reaction symptoms, and if you block histamine by taking antihistamine medicine, then uh, that can give you a relief, okay? And there are over-the-counter uh, pills, I mean antihistamine tablets, that, uh, like very famous loratadine that comes with the name of claritine. And then uh, there is a citrazine, uh, and comes with the name of Zeltec allergy, and uh, paxophenadine, that is, that is Allegra allergy, okay. The prescription antihistamine nasal spray, that is uh, azelastine, and uh, Olopatidine uh, can relieve nasal symptoms. Antihistamines eye drops such as ketotephen fumarate and that comes with the name of alave, alave, alave help relieve eye itchiness and eye irritation caused by hay fever. Then there is a third group of drugs that is known as uh, decongestant. These medications are available in over-the-counter and prescription liquids, tablets and nasal sprays. Over-the-counter oral decongestants include Pseudoephrine that is Sudafed uh, that come with the name of Sudafed or Ephrinol. 
Nasal sprays include phenylephrine, hydrochloride, that is a new cyanophrine and oxymetazoline, that, that is aphrine, okay. Well, oral uh, decongestant can cause a number of side effects, so you should be careful before using them, uh, them okay. These side effects include increased blood pressure, insomnia, irritability, and headache. So do not use a decongestant nasal spray for more than two to three days at a time because it, it can actually worsen symptoms when used continuously. That is known as rebound congestion. Then there is another drug that is known as chromolin sodium. This is available as an over-the-counter nasal spray that must be used several times a day. It is also available in eye drop form with a prescription. It helps relieve hay fever symptom by uh, preventing the release of histamine. Most effective when you start using it before you have symptoms. Chromolin sodium does not have any serious side effects. Okay. Then there is uh, another medicine which is uh, which is can be used that is leukotriene modifier um, uh, group of drugs. And there is a famous drug that comes come with the name of uh, Montelukast that is available with the trade name of Singular. It's a prescription tablet taken to block the action of leukotrienes, which are immune system chemicals that cause allergy symptoms such as excess mucus production. It is especially effective in treating allergy-induced asthma. It is often used when nasal sprays cannot be tolerated or for mild asthma. Montelukast can cause headaches. In rare cases, it has been linked to psychological reactions such as agitation, aggression, hallucination, depression, and suicidal thinking. Seek medical advice right away for any unusual psychological reaction. Okay. Then there is another uh, drug known as nasal apratropium that is available in a prescription nasal spray. Apratropium helps release fear into runny nose by preventing the glands in your nose from producing excessive fluid. It is not effective for treating congestion, sneezing, or post-nasal drip. Mild side effects include nasal dryness, nose bleeds, and sore throat. Rarely, it can cause more serious side effects such as blurred vision, dizziness, and, dif and difficult in urination. This drug is not recommended for people with glaucoma or men with an enlarged prostate. Then uh, uh, we can also use uh, oral corticosteroids in uh, rare cases. Well, corticosteroid uh, pills such as prednisone sometimes are used to relieve severe allergy symptoms because the long-term use of corticosteroids can cause serious side effects such as cataracts, osteoporosis, and muscle weakness. They are usually prescribed for only short periods of time. Okay. And then there is the other treatment options and that is, uh, uh, that is known as immunotherapy. I mean allergy shots. If medication do not deliver your hay fever, uh, do not relieve your hay fever symptoms or cause too many side effects, your doctor may require allergy shot that is immunotherapy or desensitization therapy. Over three to five years, you will uh, receive regular injections containing tiny amounts of allergens. The goal is to get your body used to the allergen that cause your symptom and decrease your need for medications. Immunotherapy might be especially effective if you are allergic to cat, dander, dust mites, or pollen produced by trees, grass, or weeds. In children, immunotherapy may help prevent the development of asthma. And then there is another option of uh, under the uh, tongue uh, sublingual allergy tablets. Rather than getting shots, you have tiny amounts of allergen in pill form dissolved in your mouth, usually daily. So these can also this is uh, I mean this is sort of oral immunotherapy. Okay. Then you uh, then you can also rinse your uh, uh, start rinsing your senses, rinsing your nasal passages with distal steroid saline is a quick, inexpensive, and effective way to relieve nasal congestion. Rinsing flushes out mucus and allergens from your nose. You should look for a squeezed uh, squeezed bottle or neti pot, which is a small container with a spout designed for nose rinsing at your pharmacy or health food store. To make up the saline irrigation solution, use water that is distilled sterile, previously boiled and cooled or filtered using a filter with an absolute pore size of 1 micron or smaller. Also be sure to rinse the irrigation device after each use with similarly distilled sterile, previously boiled and cooled or filtered water and leave open to air dry. Okay. So this was the treatment. Now I'll tell you some lifestyle and home, lifestyle and home remedies. It is not possible to avoid allergens completely, but you can reduce your symptoms by limiting your exposure to them. If you know what uh, what you are allergic to, you can avoid your triggers. For now, for pollen or moths, you can close doors and windows during pollen season. 
Do not hang laundry outside. Pollen can stick to sheets and towels. Use air conditioning in your house and car. Use an allergic red filter in your home ventilation system and change it regularly. Avoid outdoor activity in the early morning when pollen counts are highest. You should stay indoors on dry windy days. Use a dehumidifier to reduce indoor humidity. Use a high efficiency particulate air that is a HEPA a filter in your bedroom and other rooms where you spend a lot of uh, time. Avoid mowing the lawn or make, uh, raking leaves. Wear a dust mask when cleaning house or gardening. Uh, now I'll tell you for dust mites, I mean um, and the precautions. You, you can use allergy proof covers on mattresses, uh, box springs and uh, pillows. Uh, wash sheets and blankets in water heated to at least 130 Fahrenheit, that is 54 degrees centigrade. Use a dehumidifier or air conditioner to reduce indoor humidity. Vacuum carpets weekly with a vacuum cleaner kept with a small particular or HEPA filter. Spray insecticide uh, designed to kill dust mite, that is acaricides, and approved for that is approved for indoor use on carpets, furniture, and bedding. You should consider removing carpeting, especially where you sleep, if you are uh, highly sensitive to dust mite. Well, um, in my clinical practice, uh, I have advised so many of my patients to remove the carpet from their houses and, and they have uh, found this very effective, okay? For the cockroaches, I mean, you should block cracks and uh, crevices where ro roaches can enter, fix leaky faucets and pipes. Wash uh, dishes and empty garbage daily. Uh, sweep food crumbs from in counters and floors. Okay. You should store food, including pet food, in sealed container. You should consider professional pest extermination. Okay. For pet tender, keep pets out of your home if possible. Uh, bathe dog, uh, dogs twice a week if possible. The benefit of bathing cat has not been proved. Keep pets out of your bedroom and of furniture. And now I'll tell you some role of alternative medicine. Well, there is not much evidence about how well alternative treatment works. A number of people try them for a fever. These include herbal remedies and supplements. Extracts of the sh shrub butter bar may help prevent seasonal allergy symptoms. If you try butter bar, be sure to use a product that is labeled PA free, which indicates that it has it it's it ha had potentially toxic substances removed. Okay, there is some limited evidence that. Spirulina and Tynospora cardifolia also may be effective. Though their benefits are unclear, other herbal remedies for seasonal allergies include calcium, honey, vitamin C, and fish oil. Acupuncture. Some people claim that acupuncture can help with seasonal allergy symptoms. There is a limited evidence that this in treatment work, but there is also little evidence um, of harm. Well, this was my video about uh, allergic rhinitis or hay fever. I hope you like this video and if you have uh, any questions you can post in the comment section. Uh, thanks for watching this video. See you in next video. Bye for now.